here. We got some big things to cover, but like I said yesterday, we're not doing stuff that's really all that new. Really, we introduced you to all the terms yesterday. Remember, we talked marginal product of labor. We remember what that is. The marginal product of labor is the change in output for a given change in labor. So we got that. Then we went. We said, well, if we're going to make those decisions, like the problem we looked at yesterday with Dawson's Bakery, how many bakers is he going to hire? We looked at the value marginal product of labor. We looked at how many extra pies and then how much Dawson's Bakery could make from those extra pies. So we took a look at that. That was what we called value marginal product, marginal product times price. But we introduced you to a new term, and that was marginal revenue product of labor. That's going to be more generally applicable, okay? Because a lot of the textbooks, they're woefully inadequate when it comes to the coverage of labor markets, and they stop with value marginal product of labor. That's only useful if we're dealing with competitive markets, competitive output markets. Dawson's is selling his pies at a constant price. Now we know we know enough about markets. We can deal with this. We know that if he's selling his pies at a constant price, he can sell as many pies as he wants for eight dollars is what we had in the problem. That means he is a price taker. Price taker, which means par Mr. D. So price equals marginal revenue. So the difference with marginal revenue product of labor was that it's the marginal product of labor times marginal revenue which is exactly the same if we're dealing with competitive markets. So, we had those terms. We talked about wage being how much we pay to the labor, but we also mentioned rent because we wanted to remember that these terms, marginal product, value marginal product, marginal revenue product, could also be applied to capital. Not just how many bakers that he might employ, but we might take an automobile factory and try to figure out how many drill presses the factory ought to employ and they're going to pay the rental rate for those. So those are applicable. But remember we said this about wage. Marginal factor cost. That's how much our factor cost changes with one more employee. Now, if the company is hiring workers in a competitive market, wage equals marginal factor cost. So those simplifications that we made back in the first quarter when we first started doing some of the marginal analysis, we were using VMP, I'll just say a marginal benefit generally, and marginal cost being the wage. But now we're going to get a little bit more particular and we're going to break these assumptions of perfectly competitive markets. Okay? The other term I want to just remind you of is derived demand. Remember the demand for labor is derived. Labor, we demand labor because of what labor can produce. So the demand for labor depends on, it's derived from the demand for the goods and services that that labor produces. Okay? So a little recap on the terms there. 